Hi, I'm Tom Miggett from Tom Miggett Photography. This is the second episode of a series dedicated to watermarks, logos and signature. In the previous episode we saw how easy it is to change your colored background of your logo into a transparent one so it can be used more easily across your documents and your own photographs. If you haven't watched this episode I invite you to click on the link right now because it will help you understand the episode of today. Well, today we are going one step further and we are going to create our own logo based on our own signature. I'm going to do it with my own signature and you're going to do it with your own. How are we going to do this? Well, we're not going to use a, um, a pen and a graphic uh, tablet simply because I believe that the majority of you guys who are watching this video might not have this tool. So instead, we are actually going to do it in the old fashioned way using a single pen and a single sheet of paper. Let's go. So, what I recommend you do is you take any sheet of paper. It doesn't matter the color of the paper. It is probably easier if you go with white, but that being said, every paper works. Um, in terms of pen, go for anything you want, but you'll see that the thinner the, the pen, um, the greater it looks, but sometimes it might be difficult uh, to deal with the selection. And we'll go into details uh, later on. Uh, as I was preparing for this tutorial, I've actually created a file, uh, a file, a page with my signature on it. I've actually done it six times and I encourage you to do it several times because you may have noticed that it's very difficult to actually um, create uh, the same signature every single time. So you're bound to have one better than the other. So as for me, I've actually created six of them. Once you have done that, you're then going to need to scan it or take a picture. You can use your camera and feel like James Bond for a second. Don't forget to look in the mirror because you might not look like Daniel Craig at the end of the day though. <laughs> you know, for joking, in my case, I'm actually going to use my favorite scanner. Uh, it's from Fujitsu and it's called the ScanSnap S1300i. Uh, it's not to do an advert for uh, Fujitsu, uh, simply because I love this scanner. It's very quick and if there was one to recommend, it would be it. So I'm just positioning my paper and press the scan button. And that's it. It goes through it. Come on. It's very quick and this is done. So now I'm just going to make sure that I can save that document to uh, the folder that I want. So I'm going to call this document Signature. I know it's not very original, but, and no, we're not going to go in the French tutorial. We're actually going to go to the English one. So let's go to the English tutorial, choose and save. So now that it's done, I can have my JPEG file and I'm just going to drop it in Photoshop. So you see my six signatures there, but I must admit, I love the number two. I think it's the best. So I need to extract that signature from that uh, file. So the way to do this is you could use selection tools and so on. I'm going much simpler than that. I'm actually going to use the, um, the crop tool. So what I do with the crop tool is I'm just going to drag it down here and reduce it right underneath here and on the sides as well. So like this and here we go. Enter. I just find that the file here is the image is really really small as you can see it's actually about 400 and so um, pixels. So I'm just going to go to image, image size and here it says 420. I'm going to change to 400 by 800. Why 800? Just like that. Click enter and it's slightly bigger. Let me zoom in. Control or command equal on the Mac. So now what we're going to do is to find a way to remove that white background, similar to what we did last time. Uh, before we go to the color range uh, selection tool, notice my layer is actually locked like the last time. So let's click on the padlock and now it's no longer locked. Let's go to select color range. The last time we actually talked about the, let me just delete the selection preview. We talked about the sample colors and we also talked about uh, the highlights. This is the one we ended up using. Well, today I want to spice it up a little bit and we're going to use the midtones. What are the midtones? Well, we're everything that is gray and black, dark. And it's very simple here because we're dealing with basically uh, dark, gray, dark, black and white. 
So what we have is the range. The range here uh, shows you everything that is dark. Uh, I'm not going to use this one. I'm going to leave it to zero. But if I change the preview to grayscale, look what happened if I go at 255. 255, this is pure white. So I don't want this. What I want is select only what is dark. So I want to get rid of all those artifacts that actually come from the scan of my paper. If you take a picture with your camera, you may end up having the same artifacts as well. So let's reduce the range until those artifacts are gone. And I think here we actually are pretty good, 223. Let's click OK. What you see here, unlike last time, is our image, our logo, but what is only selected are the midtones. What is grey, what is dark. But we want to get rid of everything else, what is white. So somehow it's the opposite. And to do that, we need to change our selection to somehow invert it. And to do it, you go to select here in a menu and you do inverse. When you do this, it may look the same to you, but look, now we have the matching ends on the edge of our file which means that basically the entire document is selected except the signature. And now we have only a very natural thing that is about to happen when between a man and a machine. It goes with one finger and one keystroke, the, the delete key. I hit it, that's it, deleted the background, and we have our signature. What we're going to do now is actually save this selection uh, as a PNG file. So you do file, save as, and we're going to go in tutorial and we're going to call it signature but let's call it black signature so black signature and instead of psd let's make sure that we actually save it as a png remember last time we want this transparency and we don't want a psd file although it does understand transparency but not for lightroom so let's do save and okay now it's time to go to lightroom and uh, use this graphic as our new watermark. So in Lightroom, I have this photograph. That photograph was captured, it's not edited yet. Uh, I had a pleasure to capture this during a photography workshop that I've done with um, Stefan, who has spent a few days here in Scotland a couple of weeks ago, where we went to the Isle of Skye, and it was a fantastic evening to capture this beautiful uh, scenery at this point. Anyway, uh, the point is now we're going to do export from the library module and when you do export all you want to go to is basically to the watermarking and if you actually go down the drop down list here I have several watermarks that I've actually uh, created in the past but let's go to edit watermarks by default you land on this page and you notice that the watermark style here at the top right corner it says text which means that basically you can write any text you want for example i could add photography yeah, photography photo <laughs> photography okay and um you can actually change any a lot of things uh, on that text you can start with the font if you wanted to have i don't know papyrus for example um feeling more egyptian and then you can actually play with the shadows and stuff, which you might not actually see uh, here on your screen. Uh, you can then play with opacity, and that is pretty good, because look, you can actually do something almost invisible, but not quite. Or you can go full on at 100%. You can go proportional, and that's pretty good when it comes to the size, uh, because you're sure that the size of your watermark will be proportional to the, uh, to the, to the length of your file. So if you vertical or horizontal, having something proportional is a good idea. Then you have the anchor point here. We have it at the bottom left. I tend to prefer in the bottom right. Uh, so you could have it there. You can have it in the corner or even in the center of your image. Let's go back to the bottom corner. The insert. The insert is basically a margin and you have the horizontal margin if you want to add to separate your watermark from the right edge here. Uh, it would be the same if I went on the left. You notice we have uh, a margin here. Go back to the right and we have a vertical insert as well. So if I wanted to bring it lower. So that is when you want to create a watermark based on a text. But here in this episode, we want to use our signature. So at the top right corner, you go for graphic and you're going to choose 
the graphic you want. We're not going to use tutorial because this is French. We're going to the English tutorial and we're going to choose our black signature. I click choose and here we go. When I, I could increase the size, let's make it proportional and I could increase the size. One thing that you may notice, um, especially when you're going to export, uh, I could actually let me, I'll talk about it in a second. Let's leave it uh, like this. I'm going to reduce and uh, reduce as well the, the margin. I don't actually need that and reposition it correctly. I think this is pretty cool. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit save here at the bottom right. When I save it, it asks me for the name of a new preset. Let's call it black signature. Create. Now if I actually export, let's make sure that I export in the right folder called tutorial. And uh, everything else is pretty normal. It's just JPEG. The size is 2,000 uh, pixels and uh, just a little bit of sharpening because it's to be used for screens, for example. And that's it. Just hit export and let me open that file. Uh, I'm going to tutorial. Here's the file. Let me close this because I have some of the French tutorial. So let's reopen it. Here's our signature. It's actually not that great. You notice how much white we have on the edge of our signature? Well, this is because I actually used a very thin uh, pen and when I made my signature. And so when we do selection in Photoshop, it might not actually be that precise. We could use several options like refine edges and so on. Let's keep it simple, guys, because this is just a watermark. So let's go back to Photoshop, where I'm going to show you how to actually rectify this. We go back in Photoshop, and here we are. So we here we have a selection, but what we have is the entire image selected except the signature. That's not what we want. We want to inverse uh, that. So to do that, we invert that. So we actually go to the Select menu and do Inverse. So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to play with a paintbrush. I know, it's as easy as it sounds, trust me. So you select this and we're going to click here and go with a picker all the way to the black. And as long as we have a selection, when we go on it, it's only going to paint it within that selection. Now I'm going to do File, Save As, and I'm actually going to save as the name of the previous file, which was Black Signature PNG. Don't forget to change the format. That is something that drives me nuts in Photoshop is when I want to overwrite a file, uh, you see I clicked on black signature PNG. Instead of taking that format, that PNG format, it forces me to go to Photoshop format. I don't want that. It's driving me nuts. So don't forget to go back and select PNG as the format. Then hit save. It already exists. So let's do a replace. And that's it. Let's go back to Lightroom. I don't need to go back to the watermarks because I just replaced the file. I do export and now let's hit export. It already exists. Let's use a unique name and let's go back to that folder. We have our two files. Let's select it. Open it. Oh, it opens twice. So let me up, hit open again. And here we are look at that file. You see the signature now, how black it is, how nice it is compared to what we had initially. So this is pretty cool. However, I must admit, I'm not a big fan of the black signature here. I don't know. There's something about it I, I don't really like. It's just a taste. So what if we change that into a white signature? I bet you know what we're going to do next. We go back to Photoshop and you'll see it's very easy. We still have our selection. Let's select white. You could choose any color you want for that matter, but I want white. Select white and I paint again. That's it. Hit save, save as. And now we're actually not going to call it black signature because it's a white signature. Let's change the format to PNG and hit save. Okay. Now we go back to Lightroom and we're going to do export, but now, instead of just export it right now, because it would export in black signature, let's click on the drop down list and let's go to edit watermark. What we're going to do now is we're actually going to do choose and select our white signature. Let's select it. 
I'm not changing anything. I'm pretty happy with it, but I'm not going to hit save because if you hit save now, what you do is you're overwriting your black signature pre watermark preset. What you do instead is you click here on the left, top left, and you do save current setting as a new preset. And let's call it white signature. I think I put a, um, a space in between. There wasn't for the black one. So let's do create and that is done. Now, if I actually do export, use a unique name because we already have two. Let's go back to the folder and let's select our three files. Actually, open it. Oh, it opens three files, so we don't want that. Do it again. Here we are. This is the black version. This is the white version. And the bottom one is the bad black version. So what do you think about the black and the white? I pretty much like the white. I must admit the signature is a little bit too big. I would like to um, resize it a little bit, making it less uh, big, <laughs> so to speak. Um, but that's pretty much it. So let me know in the comments what you think about this um, this trick. What do you think about this video? If you like it, don't forget to give me a thumb. Uh, that tells everyone that this video is actually worth watching. And um, next time we actually go, we will go one step further. We will actually talk about Photoshop actions, and we'll do a mix of Lightroom and Photoshop actions to create very fancy uh, watermarking for your photographs. So until next time, this is Tommy Good saying, if you like it, well, capture it.